Well, happy Tuesday. I am Lorraine Brock, professional organizer and owner of Get Organized. And today is Tip Tuesday, where I bring you tips uh, all about practical, somewhat funny sometimes, organizational tips about everything in your life, whether it's your home, your business, or your life. We give tons and tons of tips on Tip Tuesday. Well, this Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about a plan for selling your home. Like, what kind of things do you need to take in consideration and get organized before you actually put it on the market? And I'll be honest with you, you need to have an awesome realtor. And today, I have Mary Pat with me with from Keller Williams. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, Mary Pat has been in the industry for 15 years. And what's awesome is she has been the entire time with Keller Williams. And not only that, you have been, I think, 14 years in a row, mm -hmm. you have been voted the number one realtor in the Murphy, Texas area. Is that correct? That's right. I'm awesome. So proud of that. That, that is something. I mean, that's every year but one. And that year, you were probably just getting started. I was started. You were getting yeah. started. So um, you service the Collin County areas, um, yes. Dallas areas, yes. uh, and some mm -hmm. of the cities around those. Around is that us. correct? Yes. Yes. Um, sort of tell us, you know, what what made you get into real estate? What did you like about it? And uh, you know, what's 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 what sort of happened over this time that now you're you're 15 years into it? Right. Well, uh, we I, I didn't work when our kids were little, and but we moved a lot. And uh, during that time, we bought and sold nine different houses. And about halfway through, I thought, you know, this is a pretty neat profession. I like showing it. Uh, I like looking at houses. And I thought, there's a lot more to it than that, but I can learn. So uh, when we moved here to the Murphy area in Collin County, um, I decided that I might look into it more because this was gonna be where we wanted to retire in the future. So um, I worked for a year for one of the top agents in my office at Keller Williams on Dallas Preston Road. And since then I've moved to the um, Keller Williams office, Central 75. And, um, but 15 years I've been in it and I just decided this is what I wanted to do. Right. And I got my, I went and took my classes and within two months with, with intense study, I must say, mm -hmm. uh, I took my test and I had my license. So. I was really proud of myself for that, and I really jumped in with with a lot of energy and a lot of drive because I really wanted to. It was a passion. It was a passion. And a passion. And I think I, if I'm correct, you know, my business could organize is a little over 12 years old. So mm -hmm. shortly after I started, you had already been in the industry of right. you know of, mm -hmm. of, of being a realtor and helping clients with their homes, selling and buying. Um, and then we sort of became friends, and I think we've just sort of carried on at least yeah, our yearly, yeah. if not a couple times a year, we have lunch. Yeah. We actually met at the Murphy Chamber of Commerce, Commerce, and you uh, introduced yourself, and we talked afterwards because you had a passion too. Yes. yes and yes. Uh, our friendship, we do meet at least once a year. Yeah. Then. And then we talk all the time we in between. We're, we're, we're between. just a stone's throw away yeah. from each other. Yeah. So, you know, I personally have not moved in like 20 years. Uh, we've been in our home 20 years. There's been a few times during that time that we thought we might consider doing something, but our heart was to stay where we were. And, you know, during that time, um, there's, there's, you know, it, it's changed. The markets have come and gone, they're different, uh, but, you know, it still applies to getting your home ready on the market. And one of the things that I, I guess I pride ourselves in and get organized is, you know, we don't, we do turnkey moves other than being the actual moving company where we're moving the boxes. You know, we're going in and we're helping these clients pack, unpack, and get their home uh, ready many times to be on the market. And if someone doesn't have a realtor, you know, I'm telling you guys, Mary Pat is a lady you want to go to. She's very trustworthy, uh, character outstanding. I mean, she's Johnny on the, she's organized. And any, anyone, <laughs> that's, <laughs> anyone that's organized to me is like, you got my business. You got my business. So, um, so tell me a little bit about um, one of the most unusual things that you've had. You know, you go into these homes, they're putting them on the market, and you're really, I guess, going in, and I'm going to let you talk to this, but going in and looking at what they need to do before they put it on the market. 
talk to me, and we're, we're not getting to the tips yet, but talk to me about what was, has been one of the most unusual things okay. that you have actually asked the homeowner to do or maybe given them some homework to, to get their home on the market. They may think it's beautiful and ready to go, but there are some things that you notice that they may not. Right. And I would say, don't try to do this on your own. Uh, get with, if you have a friend that's a realtor, I'm happy to help also. A uh, lot of good agents all over uh, this area. But don't try to make dis big decisions on your own. Get an agent to come in and uh, take a walk around because there's a chance that you may think something really needs to be addressed. And the agent may say, you know what, that that's minor compared to this over here. And so um, I would say get, I, in fact, there's uh, some clients I have that will be selling their house pretty soon. And I probably walked their house a year and a half ago. And I gave them some ideas of what to do, where to maybe put their money that would show off the most. And um, this is gonna help you when, uh, you know, I would say give yourself at least a month to uh, have that walkthrough with a real estate professional. And if they will, you know, you can always get a stager. I know Lorraine is a stager mm -hmm. and you have staging folks. Uh, call Lorraine and, and see if they might want to walk through with that realtor because it really will pay off if you put money where it won't give you the best benefit. And um, that's that's my advice on that. As far as the most unusual... <laughs> I had to ask yeah, this. It, yeah. I threw it in there sort of last minute, but... Oh, okay. Well, I guess that my most unusual listing was when I went to uh, list a home from a client, and it was beautifully decorated, and I walked in one of the secondary bedrooms, and in a big uh, glass... Um, aquarium. 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 There was a big snake, and... I'm a little bit scared of snakes, <laughs> but I, I, I said, oh, <laughs> well, you know what? What are we going to do with the snake? And she said, well, um, it, it won't get out, um, but it might be that I could cover it for, because I can't really move the aquarium very well. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. And, yeah, and the snake can't be in the garage because it's too hot. They need... You know, perfect, perfect, temperature. perfect temperature. And so I said, well, I think that's a really good idea. And I got out of that room pretty quick. Because <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she came up with the yeah. solution because she realized that a lot of children especially might walk in there. So actually, we never had any problem during that. We saw the house quickly and I, I was really happy that there wasn't any issue about yeah, that. Yeah, can you imagine someone coming in and uh, that are deathly afraid of snakes and they're potentially the buyers, mm -hmm. you know, they may decide right away by walking in that room that, no, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. I'm not going any further in yeah. this house. I don't feel comfortable. So, um, you know, and, and they didn't think about that, right? That to yeah. them, they were very comfortable with right. it. So mm -hmm. I would even say, like, you know, if you have, like, uh, pet rats, um, you know, and not necessarily hamsters, but, you know, anything that would be out of the norm, uh, reptiles, uh, that might be something that the realtor would probably say, yeah. let's, you know, let's, let's, let's cover that up and, and maybe even put a sign on it, like, do not disturb, yeah. because, you know, if you have kids with yeah. you when you're touring a home, too, yeah. you know, yeah. they're like, you know, up against the glass and seeing, so it keeps that distraction away, but yeah. um, I knew that there was probably some, that, some things. That sticks in my mind, and that was probably eight years ago, and I still remember. <laughs> yeah. Now, is, is, and I mean, this is sort of off note, but is, when you are with a client and you're giving them the hard truth of what they need to do, I mean, they're in love with their home. That has mm -hmm. been their home mm -hmm. probably for many years, and they they want to get the most dollar out of it. So do you find that sometimes you have clients that don't want to, uh, or that you have to sort of give advice to that sometimes not, I don't want to say stings, but... You know, you're, you're telling them some things about the home that they've built their, their family in or right. raised their family in, that these are the things. Or are they sort of like, tell me what I need to do to get the most money? Which one's more, okay. more important? Well, I can answer that. Um, I usually go into my listing appointments with a range. I'll do a, a very complete market analysis of the city they're in, and then we narrow it down to the neighborhood. 
And um, if I feel like there's a, range, a big range there, then I will look at each home and the ones that are, do not sell for as much as square footage, and I do go by a lot of the square footage in the neighborhoods, and of course the updates and all of that, but um, I will go in with maybe a range and I'll let them decide and I will show them the homes that have sold, the homes that are on the market now, and show them and let them read what these homes have. Because if, if your home doesn't have new stainless steel appliances and your home was built like 18 years ago, 2001, 2000 to 2005, most of those homes have uh, the white appliances. A lot of them do. Um, and so if, if you want top dollar and if you read the um, descriptions of the homes when they've sold, it'll usually say if they have new HV, AC, if they have a new roof, if they have a new hot water heater. And as an agent, I always put that in the description because it's, to me, buyers are looking for, if they're looking for a 20 year old home, they don't wanna to have to come in and replace the HVAC. They're looking for a home that maybe that was replaced three to four years ago. And same way with a hot water heater, it's probably the roof has been changed out because of hail mm -hmm. damage and things. Mm -hmm. Especially but, in this area. <laughs> right. And yeah. so I let I yeah. let the um, the sellers see, and we make mm -hmm. that decision together. Excellent, excellent. Because I know there's a lot to do. In fact, being at AC, we just had to replace one of ours, and I know it's mm -hmm. costly. I know it, yes. but yes. it's definitely a value added to it the is home. A value added, great, to the especially home. In, in Texas, who can do yeah. without AC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so give us a little now. Talk before we get to our tips and. We're about there. I wanted to talk about sort of what the current market is. Um, speak to us about that, you know, concerning Collin County, a little bit of Dallas. You know, tell us sort of the, what the market is when someone's looking to buy or sell. Okay. Well, you know, and on the news, you know that there are a lot of people moving into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Collin County is just booming, and you can see the construction and every, everything everywhere. And so... Um, I, I work mostly in North Dallas, in Collin County. I go some over to uh, East Fort Worth. But um, the market is a little different now than it was a year ago. A year ago, the prices were still pretty high. There was uh, less inventory, and um, people were pretty much getting what they asked for uh, for the homes. But now I'm seeing the home sales uh, kind of level out. Um, like, for example, in Collin County, there's not a lot of homes uh, that are three bedroom, two bath, under about 175. And if you find that, you may have to do some repairs. So the 175 to 250 range, there's about 235 actives right now in Collin County. The average price of those homes are 228000 with around 1,750 square feet. That's the last three months there. And then in the last three months, the souls, the average is about 229. But keep in mind, it, it, you know, it all depends on what they've done inside. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the Plano, the Plano area, in the, right now there's about 360 homes that are active on the market. Uh, about $141 a square foot. The average is about $339,000. The souls in the last five months, and I like the statistics, it's around 500. That tells me there's 361 on the market, 500 have sold, so we're still kind of low on inventory. Uh, they're going for around, that range is going for around 135 a square foot, and the average is around 332 thousands of dollars yeah in in the Plano area now as far as Dallas is concerned I did a market analysis and you know I have the access to the Netris system and it brings in homes that are from Denison to Granbury uh, to East wow. Collin County so a I, have, I have a very wide range and then I have friends in the Houston area San Antonio mm -hmm. West Texas that I can probably do some research through them if you're thinking of, you know, traveling and moving to those areas, but uh, I pulled out, I pulled up some stats on Dallas, North Dallas, and um, 
between 300,000 to around 500,000 and with four bedrooms and those act there's active right now uh, on the market about 200 um, homes they're they're running average about 165 a square foot and um, the average is about 413,000. So definitely higher a square foot in, in right, that area. Right, they yeah. are. And this is north and south of 635. It's the North Dallas address. And those that have sold in the last three months have sold for, in that four bedroom, in that price range, 300 to 500, are going for about 156 a square foot. And average is about that, uh, wow. about the full. It's still, I mean, compared to other markets in the United States, yeah. my word, it's mm -hmm. still a great deal here. It's just oh, yes. still a great deal. Yeah. I mean, we were had some people that we I had met this past weekend at a, at a conference, and some of them flew in, like say for California. And I mean, mm -hmm. everything is so high there. I mean, yeah. their taxes, their housing, it's just, it's just a lot of, a lot of cost to live there and they're like how much did you pay for a home here like it, it's like pennies to them compared to yes. so it's really still a really good market uh, even though it has gone up in the last few years but uh, yeah, and awesome. I'm, I'm seeing some cash buyers in the over 400,000 too which might surprise you mm -hmm. but I'm seeing that uh, right now Awesome. So, awesome. Know, there's some cash out there. There's some cash people. They're, yeah. they're wanting that home. Yeah. They want to get they it. Want that they, home. They, they probably yeah. sold something else and got that <laughs> cash out. Um, All right, so. so let's get to our mm -hmm. tips today about if you're planning to put your home on the market, what are our five tips? Now, Mary Pat's going to give four of her own, and I'm going to end up with number five, giving a tip for myself uh, for you guys. So tip number one, Mary Pat, what would that be? Okay, tip number one. First impressions make a huge difference. So I like to start with talking about the front, the curb appeal, the front, uh, the plants, uh, what if they're overgrown. I like to uh, say, you know, power wash your front porch, your brick. If you, uh, if you have that, or there's plenty of people that will come and do that for you, get your uh, windows. There's a lot of two-story homes around here. But there are a lot of companies that will go up there on a ladder and, and clean your windows for you on the outside. That makes a huge difference in the sparkle of your home. Uh, give some front color to the give some color to the front porch right before you go on the market. Get some fresh flowers. Uh, white and yellow flowers show really good from the street. Who knew? Right. <laughs> Who knew? They do. Red flowers, I love them, but they don't show up well. Uh, so, but except geraniums, red geraniums, I love. Yeah, they just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, if you're going to put flowers in the flower beds, I would say to put a lighter color uh, in on the front porch. That's really, really important. We all approach the realtors getting the key out of the key box, and and the buyers are behind and they're looking around. They're looking at yeah. the ceiling to see if there's any of those. Um, they're already judging. Dollars. They're already judging. <laughs> they're already judging when they're on the yeah, front porch. Yeah, and that's where the power wash will come in. Yeah. Get up there and really power wash it. Um, yeah. People like a red door. I found that too. Um, if it matched you with your house, yeah, like red, you know, it's a power uh, color. <laughs> it is a power color. There's some beautiful uh, doors out there now too. They're, they range from $800 to $1,600 with the wrought iron on them, but they are beautiful doors. And if your home is a little older home, if you would consider that, it might be well worth the money because they are beautiful with glass behind them. Um, flowers in the front entry pots look nice. Uh, let the Garden City folks, they can help you with, you know, uh, what's good for full sun and all. And sure. it's it's well worth even if you spend one or two hundred dollars. That may seem like a lot for flowers, but it would it would look really pretty in your yard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a couple things that you mentioned there. So, if you're redoing your landscape, to getting you know or updating it a little yeah. bit, uh, check with your city. Like I know that the city that I live in, they have mulch for free. Oh wow! All you have to go do is go to their center, and what they do is when they have tree limbs and stuff, they shred it. Oh. And they make mulch, and they basically put it like in a little cement, little encasing. And you can just drive up, take your trash bags, your shovels, and you can get it for free. Wow. And also, you mentioned um, like power washing and window cleaning. Mm -hmm. Check Groupon. We recently oh, did all of our windows in our house on the outside. 
-hmm. And we got that at a fraction of the price by just doing a Groupon offer. So there's mm -hmm. just some ways to really cut costs to be able to get that curb appeal that you want yeah. and, and still be organized, right? Organized, yeah. saving money. <laughs> and, and I want to have you uh, just go out to your sidewalk and look at your front of your home. You can do it before you put out the flowers, but if you have a big tree over here and you've always thought a bench would be pretty under there, chances are a buyer's going to think that too. Uh, there's some gliders you can get, you know, to sit out and people like to picture themselves coming up to your house, yeah. their house. And uh, so a bench there, maybe some flowers around a bench to make a little cozy area, uh, a swing hanging from a big tree for mm. grandkids maybe. It says, it says um, family, right? It says, right, it says home. Yeah. And if you have an oversized porch, make sure the cushions are, are pristine, maybe colorful pillows out there. And the last tip I have no, is buy a new welcome mat. It can be, it can say, I'd like for it to say welcome, be colorful, fit in yeah. with the rest of the decor. Yeah, so. nothing like profanity or like that. <laughs> don't don't oh, do. And one more thing. <laughs> Not I inviting. No. Also, don't forget the backyard. They, yeah. you know, back porches, you can put hanging baskets. Yeah, I love our back porch. Uh, I love going out there. We're fixing to put a hammock out there because oh, yeah. it's just it's just a great place to go out there in a lot of shade. So, well, awesome tip number one. Okay, tip number two, Mary Pat, take it away. All right, I've got a new tip. <laughs> and I think most of you know this, but decluttering is the key. That's tip number two, but I have a lot of <laughs> subtitles <laughs> under that. Go right ahead. Uh, Lorraine, of course, is the queen of decluttering, and it makes a huge it difference. Does. And if you want to tackle it your own self, that's great. But you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of work. I just went through this with a, with a couple yeah. that I listed their home, and their home was in pristine condition. But and you wouldn't have thought to declutter would would make a difference but we went through and it did they were willing to do the work themselves mm -hmm. and so they did it and they couldn't believe it oh, it, it just yeah. makes the rooms look bigger mm -hmm. and it makes less dusting and all that yeah i do know tips on that. well on the decluttering thing i always tell our clients when 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 clients go into your home and they're looking at they're you know what if one of the things that you know women want especially i'm not saying men don't want this but especially women um they, of course, they love their kitchen, laundry rooms, but closet storage spaces. Mm -hmm. And what happens is what we see is they the people open up these closets, and it's like the I Love Lucy closet. You know, everything is just stuff. They've had we call it a stuff a shove fest. You just shove it where yeah. it fits, and over time things get really cluttered. And so what happens is is they open it up and they say, "Man, this person's struggling with space." These, you know, and they have a family, and I, I, it's probably not going to be, we're not, it's not much space, but when they see it organized and decluttered, and they open it up, and they don't see that you're straining to get uh, another inch in there, then they are, they, their first thought is, man, there's plenty of storage space here, and it makes it more appealing for them to buy the home. So yes. decluttering is really important. And along that line, the pantry is important, mm -hmm. uh, very important uh, to Clean your pantry. Take things out of it that don't really belong in a pantry, too, because we're all pushing, you know, change. No, no, no <laughs> old printers or electronics in there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, another thing that people may not uh, think about, but this is a good tip, is clean your refrigerator. Because oh, I yes. bet I bet 75% of my buyers will open the refrigerator. Oh, even inside, too. I was thinking on the outside, all the, no, oh, all the kids' no. smudges and no, stuff. But, the outside uh, is a no-brainer. Yeah, 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 no-brainer. But brainer. the inside, it makes oh. a huge difference. And if you look in that, and it's just like looking in a closet. You look in the refrigerator, it's wiped down, it's clean and neat. Wow. Guess what? You know, these people love their house. They, they take good care they of take it. good care yeah. of the house. Yeah, if they so, see the clean on the outside and they open yeah. And sometimes the refrigerator comes with the house sometimes. Yes, it does. And so you open it up and you see mold and mildew and food spilt over. You're yeah. like, these people aren't really taking care of their stuff. No. And that's probably going to speak volumes about the other parts of the home. Yeah, and, and we're in the kitchen. And that's another point I have. Uh, the rooms that have the most impact on a buyer, the kitchen. Mm -hmm the master bedroom and the bath, uh, the media room. If you have a beautiful media room, 
put on a um, Toy Story. Yeah, a something. movie. Yeah, like a it. movie and have the, have the sound kind of down, but have it so they can walk in and see themselves. Sitting down for like, that. That is a great idea. Uh, Maybe a fresh bowl of popcorn that's really yeah. stale. They don't have to eat. <laughs> Just right there in the middle of the yeah. coffee table. <laughs> yeah. But those are the rooms. Um, the child, the secondary rooms are important. but uh, And the living room, the family room, you know, usually connected to the kitchen. Uh, that's an important room, too. Kitchens can sell a house. They really can. Wow. And wow. the master bedroom and the bath. Love it, yeah. love it. Yeah. Okay, tip mm -hmm. number three, Mary Pat, take okay. it away. Okay, can I give one more no, tip? No, go ahead. Okay. We're going to go back to uh, number, number two. Let's go yeah. back to number two. Go yeah, Let's, let me give you one more tip. Don't forget the garage. Um, I know that garages can look cluttered, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be perfect. And I really don't mind uh, you going through and putting um, the clutter in a tub mm -hmm. and moving the tub out to the garage. I don't mind the garage having packing in it or packing boxes, but what I do want to caution you is make a trail when you go out of it. Let let people, if it's a family of five and the kids are there, they're all going to want to go out and see it. So make it there where you come from the house into the garage. Make that a space and also make a trail out to the back because they're going to want to put the garage door up and walk out to the back and see if there's an alley or see where that back part goes. Versus saying we can't get through here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, so awesome. Uh, that's, that's the decluttering and also personal pictures and all a big part of Take that. Take it all down. Take yeah. it all down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tip number okay. three. Tip number three. Maintenance is very important. Here are some basic maintenance ideas that you can do yourself or there's a lot of handyman out there oh, yeah. that can do it. Um, some negative vibes to buyers are caused by these. Loose doorknobs and faucets. That's negative to go into. It wiggles. It, it wiggles. wiggles. Doors that stick and burned out light bulbs. Mm. They're easy fixes yeah. and just you might not think about that, but that's why I'm here to give you some really good ideas on what to think about. Also, so that's that's a biggie to me. Yeah. That's a, the negatives, you don't want negatives when they come in. Uh, Recalking the grout around the toilets, the mm -hmm. tubs, the sinks. Uh, you can do that yourself, but make sure it looks neat. You yeah, know? we don't want you know, a big old mm -hmm. you know, an inch thick on there. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And also, an inspector will come in if there's caulking that's cracked around the outside, it's weathered, and you haven't mm -hmm. had it up updated for a while, you might consider that. Now, two-story houses are really hard to caulk on the upstairs bedrooms. You have to hire that out, yeah. probably. But if you can do it yourself and you can make it look really professional, then that might be something that you would want. And another thing that some people overlook and it's very important is to, while you're getting your house ready to put on the market, change those HVAC uh, filters. filters. Change yeah, you should be doing that anyway, like once a month. And I always tell our clients if we're if they're helping with them with time management, is you know things just like putting a reoccurring appointment on. If you even if you use a paper calendar, just put it on there at the end or beginning of every month and say change filters because don't rely on this because it'll fail you every time. Right. But you want to start off with clean filters. So if they are checking. Oh, they'll be checking. They'll be checking. <laughs> <laughs> they go. These people, they got it. They got it. Well, another thing on um, maintenance is uh, a lot of your chimneys uh, are made with wood, and those chimneys are weathered. You know, they get a lot of weather and wind. So uh, look up at your chimney, uh, especially mm -hmm. if it's not brick, uh, the wood, and see if that's kind of rotted wood and, and it needs to be repainted. You might want to get that done because an inspector will probably call that out anyway. And also around any wood uh, trim around the outside windows. Uh, if, if you see any wood rot, that's a biggie. And so just uh, get somebody to help you do that, sand it down, and repaint. Uh, the trim, the trees on the outside, that's a big maintenance thing. If they touch the house, an inspector will call that out to say it's a... Um, condition that could lead to ants getting in the house or termites. 
Mm. So yeah, trim, they your, go right over right, onto. trim your trees back. Don't let tree limbs touch your um, the top of your house your, um, at all. And, um, you know, just just That's make good. sure you go around and trim your shrubs back. So no touching, no touching the house. Yeah, I that. like that. I like yeah. that. So All right, so yeah. your last and final tip, <laughs> number four, okay. what is that? Okay. Now we've talked about preparing, uh, talking to someone, get the ideas. We've talked about what you can do to mm -hmm. declutter. We've talked about some maintenance issues, which are very important. But now we're going to talk about when you get close to listing day and the showings <laughs> are going to come. Because this is so, where people are going to start looking now. That's right. You've yeah. done all this work. You're just exhausted. But, you know, your realtor keeps saying, add a girl, add a boy, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and uh, so here's some things, tips that I have picked up through the years. Make sure you have your bed spreads that are all ready to go and they look nice. You might want to invest in some new ones that will look good in that new house you're buying when you're leaving this house. That's right. Yeah. So uh, make sure you have some pretty bed, bed spreads and pillow covers and things like that. Um, put out new clean towels in your bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, hand towels, body yes, towels. Hand towels. This can be a, a white. It can be a color that you like to accent, but I kind of like the white, pristine yeah. look. Uh, and clear your countertops if you know you put your makeup on in the morning. But just have okay. a little uh, caddy that you can put that in and push it under mm -hmm. your sink. Uh, clear the kitchen cabinets. That's part of decluttering. Yeah. But just make sure they're wiped down good. Uh, don't forget to water those plants. You planted in the front yard, <laughs> on the porch. Don't plant the them backyard. and then let them die because yeah. then it defeats all the purpose of the hard work, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Mm. And then I like this and, and I think it really helps people. When you get the house ready to show and you've done everything, you've worked so hard, go around and take pictures yourself. It's so easy now to take pictures with your phone. And just take up of your closets and if you think, oh, I don't want to take that closet, Maybe you should clean it out. So you could take a picture of it. So you don't want to take a picture of your closet, it's probably it's, not the shape you want it in. Right. So just go around and take pictures. Yeah. Scroll through your phone and say, ooh, you know, that that purple vase really jumps out at me. I think yeah. we'll put that under the counter instead of leaving it out. Yeah. Things like that. And uh, you could even post your final pictures, um, a few of them maybe on your Facebook or your Instagram. Some self marketing. Yeah. Do a little say, hey, we we've been working really hard with our really nice mm -hmm. realtor. Very good. And uh, <laughs> uh, we're getting our home ready to put on the market. So uh, you know she's gonna have an open house here soon after it goes on the market. So uh, and then you can you can post some progress on the way and get your friends because when I have an open house I really um, like to encourage the neighbors to come in because if they probably live in there, they really love the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I really talk to them about, hey, do you have a friend that would like to maybe see the home because mm -hmm. they're close to you? So really welcome your neighbors to come in and um, I guarantee that all of your hard work uh, will pay off in the end. And uh, you'll get you you put your home in the very best light that you can. Yes. You might not can do all of these. You may not can do all the maintenance things, but do the best you can. And I'll guarantee you that your best preparations it'll make you feel great when it goes yes. on the market. And I think you'll really get the price point that you're looking for. I hope so. Yeah. And I want to I add a couple things to that. So, you know, when you had mentioned earlier, get a friend to come over and sort of look at your home and sort of mm -hmm. tell you what needs to be fixed. Same thing on the, when you're done with it, or at least when you think you're done with it, right? Mm -hmm. Have someone come in and give them the permission to tell you all the negative things that they still think you need to. To work on mm -hmm. I mean because sometimes it's hard for people I am NOT one of those people I can I can say something immediately and and feel fine I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings but some people have a difficult time pointing out negativities about people's property or something so if you really want the honest truth give them permission to say tell me what's wrong what you don't like and, and some of those things may be a preference but other things may be really things that you need to fix and one other thing we had an organizer uh, just recently uh, that lives in Anna 
and she's one of our awesome organizers at Get Organized, and they have been living in this home probably for about, I don't know, three to five years, and they have slowly been, you know, changing it and making it more home. Well, they decided to live on, on the market, and just so you know, she's extremely organized, has definitely an eye for decor, did her own home, staged it, decluttered it, she put it on the market and within 72 hours and the reviews of what their house looked like was, I mean, that was really the selling point. It was absolutely so just well cared for and decluttered and organized and people like, this is an organizer's home. I and mean, they just knew it. It just spoke volumes. So, and by that, she got more money for it too than she yeah. wanted. So it really does, does pay off. So thank you, Mary Pat. Yeah. Um, all right, last and final tip, tip number five is my tip, and um, what I wanted to sort of go over, and I am not a realtor, uh, you know, when we go in, we're working with them on getting their home on the market in the best condition it can as far as looks and, and, um, and, and staging of it. But years ago, when I was selling our home in Waco, Texas, this is probably what, 25 years ago, the realtor told me, they said, you want to have the potential buyer mentally move in your home when they're coming. They need to envision their life unfolding and taking place. And so you want to make it as inviting to someone as possible. Things to stay away from, they had, and maybe you would agree with this, I don't know, tell me, you know, with particular scents in the home, someone may hate vanilla, so don't put vanilla in your home. What they recommended is turning on the oven and on a low temperature and taking a little capful of vanilla extract and throwing it in your oven and it smells mm -hmm. like homemade cookies, yeah. like really homey. Yeah. Uh, open the blinds in your home because people don't like to walk into dark, gloomy homes. Yeah, right. They want bright. So open your blinds, let the lights in. Uh, and in Texas, everyone knows the AC is extremely critical. We talked about that a little earlier. Um, especially in the summertime, make your house cool. Make it at a really good temperature. Like I would, I'm not sure exactly, but I'd say around 70 degrees mm -hmm. would probably be somewhere close because, um, you know, it's not too cold, but it's also not too warm. And just make sure, you know, turn the lights on in the house if you need to and the blinds. So um, those are just some things that you can do uh, just from when we were selling our home that I have learned and we sort of passed down to our our clients. Another really good scent, I think, is a citrus scent. It's mm -hmm. clean, it's fresh, and a plug-in citrus. You might try some out, see, but just because you like lavender doesn't mean everybody does. Yeah. And I love it, but the scents that I have found most people like a more healing the, to the masses. Yeah, yes, right. Are the the citrusy. So that might be a tip. Yeah, too. and my sister-in-law, she does not like rose, the smoke no. rose. You know, so it's don't, too it's, heavy. It, it's too heavy. So you don't want to go in there and um, and be, you know, make people not even interested or, or they could be allergic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so just, you know, keep that in mind. What you think smells good may not be somebody else's, but I think everyone loves homemade cookies. I mean, yeah. they may not be able to eat them, but they love them, so. Um, all right, so let's go on. I want to mention uh, last week, we uh, gave away, uh, or we actually put into motion, giving away uh, four table tents that you can use during a picnic. And I don't have one with me today, but basically they're like little bitty tents uh, that are like netted. Net, and they... That's right. You raise like them up. Like an umbrella. Like an umbrella, yeah. yeah. And you put them over large bowls or platters when you're having picnics, because last week we, we talked about, yeah. you know, an organized picnic. So the person that won that was Jennifer Ashford, Ashford, and she's from Edmond, Oklahoma. So congratulations, oh, congratulations Jennifer. Congratulations, Jennifer. Yeah, and you will love those. And uh, I love them all the time. And the great thing is they collapse right down and you great yeah. for storage when you're not having a picnic or an outdoor activity. So we will get those in the mail to you uh, this next week and congratulations. So um, our giveaway today, we always do a giveaway. We always yeah. do something. Yeah. And I wanted to show this. This is actually a travel scale. I'm going to get up here and sort of let you guys see it here. I don't actually have one, but it is a travel scale. So when you go to the airport... Uh, and you have luggage that you're not quite sure if it's going to meet that weight limit. Guilty, like, all the time. Like, I pack, like, Mrs. Brock, you're going to have to pay extra or take something out of the thing. So here I'm unzipping my suitcase, all my underwear is coming out, and, you know, all my stuff. And I'm like, 
Oh, and I'm supposed to be misorganized here. And so uh, I don't look organized all the time at the airports because I tend to pack a lot, like a shoe for every outfit. But anyway, the travel scale, you just basically hang the luggage on this, right around the luggage handle, mm -hmm. and you hold it up, and it tells you the digital weight on here so you don't get surprised. I've tried to use my weigh scale, you know, you weigh your you know, whole person on, and um, you know, trying to put a big suitcase on that, you're, you're guesstimating at best. So anyway, we're giving away for uh, this next week, so here's how you win this. Mary Pat gave away four great tips for getting your home on the market, and um, I gave away one. So I need you guys, during this next week, to leave comments down below of which tip you liked. It was the most uh, oh, creative hey, tip yeah, that you never thought about. Even if you're not selling your home on the market, maybe one day you will be. And uh, these tips can be used at any any time. These are tried and true tips. I mean, these not these tips aren't going away. I mean, these are tips right. that you ever homeowners got to uh, consider and do. So leave a comment down below of which tip you like the most, and you'll be entered to win this. And we'll announce the winner next week. So maybe I'll win that. I can always use more. Uh, okay. So the next thing is our tip Tuesday tool of the week. So every week, I select a tool that's normally a, a resource or an organizing product that I love, either A, I've used, or B, we've used it in a client's home, or, or maybe even found it in the store or online, and I was intrigued by it. So I have my Tip Tuesday tool here. And Mary Pat, if you'll reach in there, okay. and let's take that out. Okay. There we go. Awesome, okay. Oh, so this is a container uh, that I don't actually know the name of. It's uh, called Store and More Modular System. You can see Store and More. It's, it's going to be backwards in the video, but it's Store and More um, Modular System. And it has a little handles here that you can actually snap. And I love that because it makes it really sturdy. You don't grab it and the lid just pop off by accident. This is actually, this particular one is actually at Walmart in their craft department. Now, one of the things that a lot of people don't think about when they go shopping for products to organize or to browse the aisles is they always look in the home organizational departments, like mm -hmm. at Walmart, right? Uh, the shelf liner, the shelf, the metal shelving, or the silverware stuff. Go to the craft departments, even like in Michael's Hobby Lobbies, and you will be amazed at a lot of the containers and products that are out there that'll help you get organized that have nothing really to do with general home organization, uh, but you can use them for that. So this particular product, uh, when you say modular, you can purchase different things to go in here. Um, like, you know, if you if you wanted to, um, like, so you see the orange one? Mm -hmm. But underneath that orange one, look at here. There's more products. There's more. So you can have layers if you want. You can get rid of all four of these. Mm -hmm. And you can actually put these all lined in the bottom. And then these right here lined on top. So let's say that you do some knitting or crafting and you uh, need it to be a little bit more portable. That's deep. I, they're very deep. Uh, I use one similar to this. Container Store has a version of this too. And uh, a little bit smaller of a container, but Container Store has a version of this and we use it for my grandkids uh, like craft supplies. We oh, actually keep it up in a cupboard and it's a little bit, little bit smaller than this. Uh, and probably a little bit more expensive because it comes from the container store, but definitely great quality. Mm. And so this would be something that you could use in a craft room. You could store, you could store batteries or office supplies or. My grandson Colin has. He's really into Beyblades. I don't. If you. What is a, that? It's a. It's a toy that you pull a string thing and it twists around like a top. And he has a lot of them, and they went and looked for something like this. And I wish that he had gotten this. This would be great for it. It's called Bay Blades. And he's nine years old, and they he has a lot of friends that are into that. That's so the that thing right great. now. So good for toys. Uh, how about Legos? Legos. If you have a small amount of yeah. Legos you want to keep in the living area. Yeah. I mean, normally kids have lots of Legos, but yeah. we did keep a small 
bunch in the yeah. living room where they yeah. can be busy. Stickers. Sticker, and we have stickers, little things you can glue on to things, like little, uh, I don't know, they're like little cotton balls that yeah. you use, yeah. and little eye, bub, wiggly eyes yeah. uh, that you use for crafts. But oh, I love that. Yeah, a little great thing, and I don't, I think this costs like 10 or $12 at Walmart. So not only check out Walmart, but also check out the container store as well. Um, all right, so we talked about, so next on uh, next week on Tip Tuesday, we are going to start a three-part series on paper clutter organization. We got a lot of uh, feedback on a Tip Tuesday about a month ago, and we, we talked about paper clutter, and people had more and more questions, and I don't feel that we gave it as much attention as it needed. It was one of those call it or uh, you know, message us and we'll ask you answer a question that you have. And a lot of the questions were on mail, how to keep track of the, the loose papers that come in and how to deal with bills versus projects. So we're gonna take the next three Tip Tuesdays and talk about systems for paper clutter. And um, make sure you bring your pen and paper and you're gonna be learning and gleaning a lot. This will apply for you if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you have a small business, if you work outside the home. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to be just a plethora of great ideas for how to manage paper. So next week uh, will be our first of three segments on paper clutter. So um, also, one of the things I wanted to mention, I mentioned every week a little bit about, about a, a go service that we offer. We um, have a, a clients um, from time to time, in fact, we're working with one now, that has family in other areas of Texas or the country, and we will travel. It's one of the things I didn't know. A lot of times you don't have organizers that will travel. We have a large, large team of organizers, probably about 25 to 30 people totally on staff, and if we can get um, the schedules coordinated, the organizers have driven, they have flown, and they will stay in hotels. Others will stay with a client, depending on the situation. And it's a great way to get uh, to people that live in more remote places that doesn't have access to organizers or really just want uh, some quality, you know, city organizers. So uh, just know that about us. If you have family that right. live elsewhere, uh, we can absolutely yeah, take care take care of them. So um, as a reminder, don't forget uh, to leave your tip down below of Mary Pat's and my tip of which tip you like the most. I won't get my feelings hurt if you like all of Mary, uh, Mary Pat's more than mine. It's totally okay. But we're going to give away this uh, scale where you weigh your luggage before you get to the airport so you don't have to be embarrassed like I do. And uh, leave a comment down below and then we'll announce you if you won next week on Tip Tuesday. Well, Mary Pat, thank you You're so much welcome. for being here. And uh, if you guys need Thank a realtor you. and you're in the Collin County, Dallas County area, um, I mean, just just give Mary Pat Keller Williams. Uh, what's your website? It's www.luxurytexaslifestyles.com, and I have a new website, www.chomesfree.com, and you can look for homes on that website too. So awesome, awesome, awesome. The website, yeah. great. Luxury Texas Lifestyles and chomesfree.com. Awesome, and I did mention she's organized. So, like <laughs> I said, that alone tells you you need to like um, call her if you're ready to put your house in the market or if you yeah. just want to you know have her go through your home or sort of you know, analysis right. uh, you'll meet with them at right. any any stage to get them ready so yeah, right. well guys thanks for joining us on tip Tuesday where I bring you organized practical and sometimes funny organized tips to help you get your home business and life organized and we'll see you next week on tip Tuesday have a great day thanks Lorraine bye